Good day. This is Brother Medina for Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist, and please let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Father, please be with us as we enter into your word. Bless us and bless everyone listening that they may understand the sense of the truth, the glory of the truth, the beauty of the truth, and the preparation that we need theologically for the terrible spiritual battles that are just ahead of us. In Jesus' holy name we pray with thanksgiving unto thee. Amen. Well, we are continuing our study on justification. And we showed you before that there are three justifications, basically, in the Bible. Justification by faith, justification by works, and justification on the account of works. Yes, my dear people. And we showed you that in the first justification, when a person repents and they believe, God counts righteousness unto them or imputes righteousness unto that person so that that person now has the righteousness of God in him through faith and this righteousness motivates the works of the law being done in him so that he does the Ten Commandments being motivated by the righteousness of God which is God himself. So then it is God that worketh in him both to will and to do his good pleasure. Yes, my dear people, these teachings that we have been presenting here to you are very important for our salvation. We live in an age where doctrine, spiritual doctrine doesn't mean much to people except it is some doctrine that is related to, let us say, uh, the general spiritualism or general activity of human beings. Like they may have a doctrine as to how to sow your seed to make money from God. Those kind of teachings are not biblical teachings. Even though they may use biblical phrases and terms and put it in a setting like that, those are not biblical teachings. The real doctrines of the Bible, the true doctrines of the Bible, evil angels have made sure that people today are not willing to even hear them. They're not even interested in those things. To human beings, those things mean nothing, nada. And as a result of that, when you tell people those things, they don't see how it relates to their personal existence. That type of experience that people present is an experience that was created by evil angels to turn people away from understanding proper, true, genuine Bible doctrine. So if you want Bible doctrine, you need to search a Bible, you need to understand important things that were taught, because those true doctrines make sure we remove from depending upon self and totally depend upon God. Because the problem of man is that self-dependence for salvation is simply saying that you are a God with God. And that was Lucifer's original claim. And this is why we need to recognize that there is only one Savior. And that one Savior is Yahweh. And when he came on the earth in a body, you call him Yahshua or Yahweh saves or Yahweh savior or Jesus. Yes, my dear people. Now, how does he save us? By imputing righteousness unto us. He must impute righteousness unto us. Now, some people say, well, you mean when you repent and believe, God declare you righteous. No, we did not say declare. The first justification, justification by faith, is not God declaring you righteous. Some people will say, are you crazy? We have heard people say that over and over, and we know that it is about God declaring you righteous. Well, we have got words for you. The first justification is not God declaring you righteous. God does not declare a person righteous when he repents and believes. God counts a person righteous. He imputes righteousness to him. Yes, my dear people. And the word declare and the word count or impute are two totally different words. Yes, my dear people. For instance, if a person comes with sins in him, he repents, he believes, but he comes before God with sins in him for pardon or for justification. 
and God declare him righteous, God would be lying. Because a declaration is always made based upon something that is previously existing. So that if you want to declare somebody righteous, the state of righteousness must exist before that you can declare it. And it is even worse because they say justification is forensic, which means a court work. So God takes it to court. So could you imagine God takes a sinful man to court who repents and believes and then declares that person righteous? How could he do that? If he declares the person righteous, he is saying the sinful state of the person is righteous. And that is falsehood. That is erroneous. That is not true. Yes, my dear people. So much that in an Adventist book from Marvin Moore, the name of the book is Conquering the Dragon Within, page 27, he is following those normal teachings of justification that all those evangelical churches follow. And here is what he says, I quote, Justification must declare righteous the entire human condition, the sinful mind, character, as well as sinful deeds. End of quote. Did you hear that? Now this teaching is evidently erroneous. How could God declare the sinful mind and which is the character, and as well as the sinful deeds righteous. But you see, this is in harmony with that forensic type of justification they are speaking about as the first justification. Because they believe when you go before God, repenting and believing, he takes you before his court, forensic, and declare you righteous. So what could he declare righteous if it's only sin you have in you? He'll have to declare your sinful mind or your character and your sinful works or deeds righteous, just as that author says. But that's heresy. That's false doctrine. That is not found in the Bible. But you see, these people have moved away from the truth so much for so long that they cannot see that they're wrong when they're saying those things. They believe those teachings that they're given are the next logical steps in an understanding that they have. And it is true, those teachings are logical, but nevertheless they are false. It is logic to say if God declare a sinner righteous before his court, he's going to have to declare the sinful state righteous. And that is what Lucifer wants. He wants God to declare the sinful state of man righteous. Because if God says man's sinful state is righteous, all men's sinful state say one thing in its summary. And that is, creation is God with God. That's what all men's sinful state says. And if that is right, or that is declared righteous by God, then Lucifer is right in his original rebellion, when he said he was God with God. And he still is caught with that mania. And this is the reason why the false justification glorifies the devil. Yes, my dear people. So we are not to expect God to declare a person righteous. Here is another Adventist preacher, John Carter. Here is what he's saying, I quote, we believe that we are justified by faith. We do not believe that justification makes us righteous. Did you hear that? So he doesn't believe that justification makes them righteous. He goes on. We believe, read this in our statements of faith. He's referring to the, the Adventist Church statements of faith. We believe justification is a declaration from God. Justification is a declaration, not a making. End of quote. Did you see that? Did you see that? There are the false teachings that they have telling you that justification is by declaration and they mean the first justification. But nowhere does the Bible say that. The Bible says justification is by imputation. And imputation is different to a declaration. A declaration is a proclamation that a state of sin freeness or holiness exists before the declaration was made. So if a person is declaring something, they're declaring something that is a fact already. Now when a sinner comes before God with sins in him, God can't declare him righteous before his court because he's not righteous yet. You have to change him first. And after you change him, then you can declare, well, you are righteous. But no, as they say, justification is a declaration, not a making. So they do not expect a person to change 
with justification, but yet God is going to declare them righteous? As Tuesday's Seventh-day Adventists have been teaching, that when God declares you righteous, He makes you righteous. That justification is not a declaration. Justification is by imputation. And it is an imputation, accounting, that makes you righteous. Yes, my dear people. You say, where did you get that meaning from? We got that meaning from the Bible. Yes, my dear people, we got that meaning from the Bible. All you have to do is to look at Romans chapter 4, where Paul explains what imputation means. First of all, I'm going to read Romans chapter 4, verse 5. Here is what we are told. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. End of quote. Did you hear that? His faith is counted. Now the word there is imputed. Counted, reckoned, all the same. The actual Greek word there is logizomai. Logizomai. And it simply means that a person is counted or esteemed righteous. Yes, my dear people. And here is the word right here. Now, if we go down a little lower down, we will see that this is a counting that makes. Yes, my dear people. We see that God spoke to Abraham about his state. And Abraham was supposed to have a child, but he was very, very old. And as he was very, very old, and his wife's womb was dead, he couldn't make any children. In verse 19 of Romans chapter 4, here is what we are told. I quote, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So here is the point. Abraham is a hundred years old. He's supposed to make a child. His wife is 99 years old. Abraham is sexually dead. His wife's womb is dead. He cannot make children. How then does Abraham make any children? How is he able to make any children? God must make him become alive. He must make Sarah's womb become alive. How does he do it? God must count it so for it to become so. He cannot declare it because it doesn't happen yet. He must count it so first, esteem it so first, and then it happens. If we read verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, Abraham is being spoken to, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead. Did you see that phrase? Quickened the dead. The word quicken there means give life, make alive. Who quickened the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. So here God called those things which are not as if they were which is to esteem them so. And that quickens the dead. And what happened? Abraham was now able to have children with his wife, and he had Isaac. So here is a counting that quickens you, a counting that makes you righteous. And this is what your Bible is showing you. Yes, my dear people. Now, if we look at the meaning of the Greek word, the actual Greek word for impute or count, the old apostate reformation concept is that counting means to assume you are so, but you are not so. That's not what the word means in the Bible. It doesn't mean to assume you are so, but you are not so. In the Bible, logizomai is the Greek word, and it means different. Let me quote for you from Dr. Spiros, so Hadiates, the Complete Word Study Dictionary, New Testament, page 922. Here is what he says about the word impute. I quote, logizomai. Actually, the verb logizomai means to put together with one's mind. Did you hear that? To put together with one's mind. So in other words, counting is a mental action. Reckoning is a mental action. Imputing is a mental action. It takes place in the mind, not audible with the mouth. So again, I quote, 
logizomai. Actually, the verb logizomai means to put together with one's mind, to count, to occupy one's self with reckonings or calculations. Logizomai also means to reckon, to value or esteem. End of quote. Did you see that? So could you imagine God with his mind esteeming something in a certain way? He esteems this to be righteous. And as he esteems it to be righteous, according to Romans chapter 4, it is made actually righteous. When God esteems it in his mind, so it comes like this. God looks at something, and when he counts that thing or esteems that thing in his mind to be alive, voila, that makes it alive. Yes, my dear people. And this is what we're being told. So imputation is a counting that makes alive. Yes, my dear people. A reckoning that makes alive. An imputing that makes alive. A mental estimation that makes something a fact. That's what imputing is. And that's the reason why when God justifies you, he imputes righteousness to you. In other words, he makes you alive with righteousness. Do you remember what your Bible tells you? For to be carnally minded is death. Did you see that? That's Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. So a carnal mind is dead in trespasses and sins. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Did you hear that? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Did you see that? So in other words, for a person to be having life and peace, they must be spiritually minded. But if they are carnally minded, they are spiritually dead. Now how do we remove from death to life, according to the Bible, when you repent and believe? When God converts you, how do you remove from spiritual death to spiritual life? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Now, if the spiritual mind is life and peace, and justification gives you peace, then justification had to have given you the spiritual mind. Yes, my dear people. So when justification gives you the spiritual mind, you not only have peace, you have life. That's why in Romans chapter 5, in verse 18, the Bible tells us about the justification of life, which is a justification that gives life. So when we were dead and in trespasses and sins, we had he quickened. Yes, my dear people, we had he quickened or given life to who were dead in trespasses and sins. In other words, he removed the carnal mind, he gives you the spiritual mind, and this is what gives you life. Yes, my dear people. And this happens by imputation, by counting, by reckoning. But that counting, that reckoning is in fact a life-giving counting, a life-giving reckoning, a life-giving imputation, a counting that makes alive, but it is a mental activity on God's part, not an outward declaration. Nobody on this earth or no angel in heaven hears God say, you are righteous when a person repents and believes. You don't hear that audibly, but you trust that when a person repents and believes, that God in his mind knows what happened. And that God in his mind, when he sees the conditions are fulfilled, he makes you alive spiritually. How? By counting, by imputing his righteousness unto us. Yes, my dear people, it is a life-giving imputing, a life-giving counting. And so we are actually made alive by imputation. Remember the example of Abraham. A hundred years old, his body is sexually dead. His wife's womb is dead. They cannot make any children. Yet God promised that Abraham would have children as the sand of the sea. How would this be fulfilled? God must quicken or count those things to be so which wasn't so. He must call those things to be which are not. And when he calls it so, it literally becomes so. When his creative word comes forth, it literally comes so. And that created word is a mental estimation, a mental counting, and that is what changes a person. Yes, my dear people, 
If you want to look at the word declaration, what it means, I quote from the words word, concise English dictionary, page 247 to 248. Here is what we are told, I quote, declaration, act of declaring. Did you see that? An act of declaring. That which is declared, a written affirmation. Did you see the word? Affirmation. In other words, something is being affirmed which is already so in reality. A formal announcement, end of quote. So when God declares a person to be righteous, the person must already be righteous before. And this doesn't happen in the first justification, justification by faith. It happens in the third justification, justification on the account of works. Yes, my dear people. And we know the Bible does speak about God declaring righteous. But that declaration takes place only as Christ is just about to come when the judgment in heaven finishes. If we look at Revelation chapter 22, we read verse 11 and verse 12. Here is what we are told. I quote, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Did you see that? That's a declaration. And then the other verse says, And behold, I quote, To give every man according as his work shall be. End of quote. Did you see that? So just before Christ comes, just before the second coming of Christ, when our names are reviewed in the judgment, those who are righteous still are declared righteous. Those who are holy are declared holy. And those who turned away from the truth and became evil or became back sinful, they're declared to be sinful or evil. You're righteous still, you remain righteous. You're holy still, you remain holy. That declaration takes place only in the judgment where a just justification takes place. And God speaks about a justification taking place in a judgment. Remember Jesus speaking, every idle word men shall speak. They shall give account thereof in a day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Here is a judgment where justification or condemnation takes place. That's the final judgment. And that is where God declares a person righteous. In other words, the person is affirmed to be what they are already. But that's not the first justification. In the first justification, a sinner is not needed to be brought before a court, a forum, for a forensic justification. In the first justification, you carry him to a spiritual hospital, which is at the feet of Jesus. He needs healing from Jesus, spiritual healing. Because by his stripes, we are healed. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, according to Isaiah 53 verse 11. So we need a healing first. And that healing is the first justification. It is justification by imputation. Justification by faith is the first justification. Now why did we say all of this? We had to say all of this because there is trouble taking place all over the world. The world is coming to an end and people need to know certain facts. The facts that people need to know are true biblical doctrines which will help them to stand on their feet. Yes, my dear people. You see, what has happened is this. That during the Reformation, when the doctrine of justification was preached by Luther, this teaching was corrupted by his chief follower, Melanchthon, Philip Melanchthon. He corrupted those teachings. He is the one that first brought forth the idea. He first brought forth the idea that justification is by God counting you righteous, and that that counting, he said, was a forensic justification, and he take the counting and he change the counting to mean a declaration. So when he said God counts you righteous, he used it to mean declare you righteous. That's how he used it. But he was wrong. 
You can't say counting and declaration are the same thing. That's false. And this is what he did. And this is why today we, Tuesday Seventh day Adventists, are setting in order the truth before people. We are sweeping away the errors of history, the tons and tons of errors that build up as hundreds of years has passed by. And we are re establishing pure Bible truth as it is presented by the Bible that people may accept Bible teachings and follow Bible teachings, which is the only way we should go. We ask of you to join this faith, to be a part of this church, to get your facts straight, and to spread these truths as people are already doing in different countries of the world. Yes, we started in Trinidad and Tobago, but the isles shall declare the glory of God, the Bible says. And we may have started here, but we can assure you that we are actually spreading the glory of God to nations all away. And as the truth is spreading to different nations now, one grand global revival and reformation of the truth is about to take place. And at the hub of it all is Tuesday, Seventh-day Adventist. Now may God be with you and help you to be a part of this wonderful feat where you get your teaching straight and right, where you see how it is workable for your life to change you and to make you different. May God bless you as you accept these truths. So then, may God bless you. May God impute righteousness to you. May God mentally count or esteem righteousness to you. May God quicken you from being dead, making you alive now. These mercies we ask of God towards all of you as you repent and believe, in Jesus' holy name, amen.